Makeup check. Hair check. <laughs> she never said she was the prettiest crayon in the box. <laughs> <laughs> Kristen's ADD today is like, oh, it's bad. (laughs) Sorry. Yeah. Uh, A lot of fast talking, a lot of incomplete sentences. (laughs) (laughs) On to the next incomplete sentence. Yeah. Uh yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, On the bright side, it makes me chug faster. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to the Red Rum and Red Wine podcast, the podcast where we talk about murder, mystery, and mishaps, including my mishaps with ADHD. Uh, Hi, my name is Kristen. My name is Sarah. Ooh. Can you tell it's going to be a good one today? (laughs) (laughs) I I do feel like the speed in my... I'm going to slow it down. (laughs) Well, luckily you're not the one like telling a story today. Otherwise, my head would be spinning probably. Yeah, I would have picked like the most intricate story (laughs) with like five different endings and a Simba no ending. What? Yeah. Sorry, my cat's here, but he's again kicked out because he chose to. It was not our doing, so... It's just it's cramped studio. He's not getting like that in. But, but, but save me. <laughs> <laughs> well, today we're drinking White Claw. <laughs> I am actually, you know. Kristen's branching out, y'all. I am branching out. It's not bad, the lemon. I don't mind it. It's good. I The smell, that's not good. I Maybe White Claw do something about that. But <laughs> <laughs> the flavor, it's, it's subtle and I will take it. I'll take it. White Claw should make um, air fresheners. <laughs> no. Just for the um, look, like for the aesthetic. not Because they obviously could smell better than see, White Claw. There's a, uh, there's a small business. I don't know if I ever find it. I'll link it. She makes candles out of the fucking White Claw. Or like any kind of can. So like a lot of people like Celsius drinks. Um, I'm not an energy drink person by any means, but... They'll like she'll make a candle out of the Celsius or the white claw, and I'm like, that's so fucking cute. out of the can. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's like she'll cut the top off, and then it's um, I think she just like fills it with candle wax. Cool. It would be cool if like the whole thing was a white claw candle, like candle. You know what I mean? Yeah, like the drink. Like if it was like just pure candle and not aluminum. Oh, but very cool idea. Yes. Still, I would still burn it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Kristen will burn anything. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, shall we get into yeah. today's story, I guess? Um, so I can shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I know you were about to ask me what I was drinking, and I'm like, I'm a white claw. I know, but like, what Even, flavor? Uh, well, it's different. Which one? Oh, do you need Whatever one, one you don't want. Yeah. Oh, tangerine. Tangerine! Disgusting. Sorry. Blech. Ugh. Today, I will be talking about the disappearance of Cookie Sharon Jacobson. I love a disappearance. I mean, it's really... It's sad. I don't love a disappearance, but disappearances are my cases that I tend to read because I am very interested in them. You know, they're all fucked up. They're all sad. And we all, you know, we hope they're all found. And just sometimes, a lot of times, they're not, unfortunately. Also, don't think I've heard this one before. So, Once you hear details, it might sound familiar because that's what happened with me. Um, and I don't remember where I heard it, but whatever. Yeah. I came across it again and I was like, you know what? Let's do it. Let's do it. So we are in Tempe, Arizona. Okay. On the morning of September 21st, 1998, Bill Jacobson kissed his wife, Cookie Jacobson, goodbye as he left for work around 7 a.m. Bill and Cookie had two children. Aaron, who is 16, and Laura, who is 13, and they claimed that as they left for school that morning, their mother, like, said goodbye, but also kind of scolded them because they were late. Mm. Cookie had recently retired from her career as a home health nurse because she was suffering from back injuries that she had gotten from a car accident. Mm. 
She did apparently take heavy pain medication for this back injury, but it didn't seem like it really affected her, like, daily life. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was said that she pedaled 50 miles on a two-seater bike with Bill. Shit, that's a lot. (laughs) Yeah. Fuck. Okay. Yeah, and she did this just a few days before she disappeared. Um, Because, you know, some people might say, like, she took medication, her mental state, she could have taken off, like, blah, blah, blah. But she seemed to be pretty active. I mean... That's way more active than I think I would even ever be at this age. <laughs> like, my so. husband probably would be doing most of the pedaling, but... <laughs> oh, damn, that's crazy. She was also trying to pursue, I guess, a less physically demanding job mm-hmm. as a graphics artist or a graphic art... Designer? Designer. Mm-hmm. Um, because she had started taking computer and graphic art classes. Oh. So when Bill came home that day from work, he found a cookie wasn't home... He also found out that she had not attended her night class that day. And in fact, she didn't even answer the front door when her friend came to pick her up for her night class. And what time was the night class at, does it say? I didn't get a time. There's no exact, like, timeline. Um, I assume just sometime in the evening. Yeah. So... Because night class isn't always, like, it's typically, like, after five. Yeah, it can, it can be anywhere from five to... Yeah. Yeah. I take night class and it starts at like six. Yeah, usually like six ish. Yeah. Seven PM ones are like, well. Oh my God. My six. Yeah. Because well. I'm there for almost three hours sometimes. I'm just like, I'm ready to, uh, not going to finish that. But yeah, I'm ready mm-hmm. to end it. <laughs> so Bill calls the police right away because it, you know, just didn't seem like Cookie. Her purse was also at the house with her credit cards, her makeup. Obviously, clothes and shoes were still there. It's not like she picked up and took off. It literally just seems like she's walked out of the house with nothing. Yeah, so her. it literally seemed like she vanished into thin air. Uh-huh. And I'm so sorry. Is Cookie her real name? I think so because... I love that, Loki. When I, you know, tried to look up details about her, there wasn't much, mm-hmm. but her name seemingly was cookie sharon jacobson i want to meet her parents real bad (laughs) cookie like it's so cute and like were they bakers (laughs) i don't know (laughs) i don't know i don't know if she baked but (laughs) we We hope so you know whether it's short term or long term most of those items that cookie did leave behind are not left at home when a woman leaves like i came to Kristen's house for a few hours today and i brought a whole ass backpack with my makeup bag with outfits with whatever (laughs) so even if you like tell me to leave for a day half of my closet is going with me (laughs) like uh hello (laughs) In the days following Cookie's disappearance, volunteers helped search for her. They passed out thousands of flyers, you know, hanging them up in businesses within 200 square miles of the Jacobson home. Mm -hmm. And so some of the reporters that were covering Cookie's disappearance pointed out to detectives that they thought it was pretty strange how her son, Aaron, wasn't helping in the search. Not only was Aaron absent during the search for his mother but he seemed to show very little interest in helping to find her like at all how old were her kids aaron was 16 laura was 13 it's fucking fear of mine that my kids gonna fucking kill me so aaron and laura were both adopted when they were babies and they led you know seemingly a normal happy life Mm -hmm. or so it seemed (laughs) The police would end up getting a call from a woman who overheard a conversation at the grocery store. Apparently, she heard Aaron saying he wanted to kill his mother. But I mean, what 16-year-old doesn't say that at one point in their life? I never said that. I may have said well, the hate okay. word, yeah. which yeah. is so I don't, I don't dumb think of me. Would, but yeah. Okay, I take that back. I did say that, like, yeah, I hate my mom, but I don't think I ever I, I could not saying that I would kill her. Okay, yeah. No, I take it back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know. Just thinking back on it now, I was like, I, I, I don't wish anything like that upon I was my a, mother. I was a fucking shitty ass child to my mom, <laughs> but too. I did not ever wish violence on her by any means. Right. So yeah, it's like, yeah, that's not, that is a little mm. abnormal. Yeah. So this obviously put Aaron on police radar. <laughs> and after um, kind of finding out some of this information, the Jacobson family was asked to take a polygraph test. 
Um, and this was Bill, Cookie's husband, Aaron, and Laura. Mm-hmm. So Bill passed his polygraph with no issues, mm-hmm. flying colors. Laura's results were inconclusive. Mm-hmm. And Aaron failed miserably. I like. <laughs> I get it, but at the same time, I do not like polygraphs are nothing to me. So I'm like, eh. right. So with this uh, failed polygraph, uh, be- from Aaron, Aaron, detectives <laughs> decide to confront him with his test results and also to push for more information and yeah. be like, "What's up with you, dude?" Mm-hmm. Aaron's story about when he last saw his mother changes a little bit because, as I said at the beginning, him and Laura claimed that they said goodbye to their mother that day before leaving the school, and she scolded them for being late. (sighs) Apparently, it was included that, you know, she was still in her pajamas, as if it's super important, but he now tells them that when he woke up that morning, he walked into his parents' bedroom and found his mom dead in bed. Afraid that he would be blamed for her death, he went to his sister Laura and told her he needed help getting rid of her mo- their mom's body. Let me swallow real quick. What the <laughs> fuck did you... That... Okay. No, no, no. That, um, that changes everything about yeah. this case <laughs> right now. Okay, so I was going to be really non-biased and be like, you know, okay, whatever. He's just an angsty teen. That... Bro, fucking put the handcuffs on you right now. Why would you do that? Oh, and you're going to get so pissed off because... I'm not ready. Yep. I, I will I, just I, say I right now anymore. this case is unsolved. I forgot that. Shit. Well, I didn't say it at the beginning. Fuck. Well, you said she's disappeared, I guess. Shit. 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 Fuck, Sarah. Don't do this to me. I know. I, I don't know this case, I don't think. <laughs> so, with the help of his sister... They wrap Cookie's body in a bed sheet. She was in on it, too. That's why it was inconclusive. I mean, fuck. Polygraphs are somewhat on point, but, like, uh, polygraphs make sense when you want it to make sense. I'll put it that way. But, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now we see the inconclusive bit. They wrap Cookie's body in a bed sheet, and they place her in the garbage can, in their garbage can, in the alley behind their house. Dude, that's their mom. After finding out this information, detectives and police checked said garbage can, but Cookie was not in there. If only it was checked, like, in the immediate days when Cookie was following her disappearance when she was missing. Because newspaper articles that were released at this time, or, you know, a little after, stated that while Aaron and Laura told everyone they had no idea where their mom was... Her body was actually in the garbage can for about three days before it was picked up by the garbage truck. What was... So, Arizona. It's hot. Yeah. No one smelled that? I guess I've never been around a decomposing body, but like three days... Probably just smelled like garbage. Three days in a hot heat. I mean, I don't know how exactly hot it was around that time, but like... Oh. Yeah, and this is while everyone was searching for her. They were like, she ah. was right there. No one fucking thought to check the fucking garbage can. She was right there. That's like the first place that you look. Yeah, so you can. No one even thought to be like, oh, let's look for some evidence of like what they throw. Ooh, this is why her audio is so sorry. sorry. I know, I'm like, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Because you could say, you know, obviously, like, there may have been, there could have been a better do- job done in searching or on the police end on, ugh, like, obviously, they probably searched the house a little bit. And it is said that they had a warrant to search the house. And, but I didn't get much details on that. So, I mean, like, I'm not a, I'm not a cop. I don't know how to do a job. <laughs> But if I had to do a job, I feel like I would have checked the trash. I don't like, uh, okay, I get it. Whatever. I can't make, like, I can't say shit because I've probably made worse mistakes. But, like, (laughs) what the fuck? That's just, like, ooh, that actually 
the whole case was right there Mm -hmm. and no one knew about it. Mm -hmm. It would have not been unsolved. It would no longer be a disappearance if they simply would have opened the fucking lid. Even if the person throwing away the trash can noticed, like, oh. And I I think I read somewhere, too, that it was a yellow bed sheet. So, like, imagine if you just saw this, like, yellow bed sheet flying out of the... Anyways. And it's, like, the size of a fucking body. Oh, my God. Oh my god, that mess that fact messes me up. Yeah. That's the fact that messes me up. It's like so your mom's just you're treating her like and literal like, garbage. Okay. She did not she did not randomly fucking die. So like what happened? What did they do? And then it's like I I hate to ask, but it's like throughout because this is reminding me of a case where someone adopted a child and then they found out the child came from like a really violent background and that child went on to do a violent thing and they're like well the, they didn't tell me so I'm like where I always want to know the why so like did they come from a violent background was there something in the house that was going on that we don't know about as like people just viewing it from a true crime case point of view it's like fuck where where where's the the mind elements to that this boggles me yeah and we just unfortunately i'll just spoil it we never find out so when detectives looked in the garbage can and saw no body they did find some blood and it would be confirmed to be cookie jacobson's blood so they do have that so it would be a yellow sheet with blood stains on it yeah, I don't know how much blood was in there. I don't know. I don't I, I don't know. I'm just like it was right there. Oh my god. Finding Cookie's body was key in this case, as it is in every case, because it's it tells very you very hard to it, convict without a body. Yeah. No body, no crime. Right. You can't it's so hard to prove that they're dead. Right. Even when you have like sorry harry potter i've been watching it a lot (laughs) even when you just have a little and you when you have a little finger and you're like oh yeah like finger dead i'm like no you don't have a body you don't know they could have chopped it off blew up the house and baked it in a pie to get the public to like think like the blood you know could have came from a tampon or something who knows there's like excuses that could pop up a little paper cut but you know obviously finding a body one would give us a cause of death yeah and it would also confirm or not confirm what her children, specifically Aaron, is saying. You know, it would corroborate his story or prove it to be false. Mm-hmm. So finding Cookie's blood in the garbage can resulted in the Butterfield landfill being searched for her body because she was presumed dead, basically, at this point. And after receiving specialized training, 18 Tempe police officers spent 59 days picking through about 8,000 tons of waste. I also read four, but they had sectioned off an area to search at the landfill, basically where they estimated her body would be, like where the trash from that neighborhood would have been taken and dumped into. Mm -hmm. And this area they sectioned off was about 70 feet long, 50 feet wide, and 13 feet deep. Ew, ew. The 13 feet deep really gets me. Just ew. That's a lot of fucking trash. That, fuck, we need to recycle more. $375,000 was Ugh. spent by Tempe to search the landfill, but Cookie Jacobson's body was never found. According to police reports, Aaron spoke with classmates before his mother's disappearance, saying that their relationship was bad and that he wanted to kill her. What the fuck? He how apparently even bragged to friends and classmates about how he had tried to kill his mom the year before, <gasps> once by cutting her brake lines. And remember, she had a back injury from, from a car, car accident. Shut the front door. I never read anywhere that it was because of cut brake lines or like. Like, there is no factual information that connected those two, but I connected those With two in my name, mind. Like Cookie, how bad could she fucking be? Like, I do not, like, what the fuck? Do we get any, like, is the, the daughter any, like, the same? Um, I'll let you know a little bit, but. Ugh. Ugh. The, he apparently 
had another attempt at his mother's life uh, with poison. Aaron and Laura were both arrested on October 1st, 1998. I would say good, but I have a feeling it's not. Aaron ar- was arrested for second degree murder and Laura for assisting him. Mm-hmm. But they were released very quickly due to lack of evidence. Basically, no body. They were literally released a few hours after they were arrested. How? Okay, so, but I... <sighs> He confessed to, if anything, he confessed to... to fucking with a dead body. Yeah, that's a crime. You can go to jail for fucking with a dead... Like, if there's a dead body and you don't report it, you can go to jail for that. We talked about it the last episode. Check it out if you haven't heard it. Yeah. But it's like, so why, why, why can we not at least put him in jail for admitting that he found his mother dead and disposing of her body? Like, that... Because they can't prove it's true. But he confessed to it. They can't prove it's true. A confession should be good enough. They should, like, get his little signature. They do it all the time with fucking people that they say murdered someone and they didn't murder it. It's because they confessed to it. It's all fucked up. It's also the 90s. We know how it was. Ew. Uh, don't. What is his real name? What's his address? Where does he live? People stay away from this man. What the I fuck? I tried looking him up on Facebook. <laughs> There were too many Aaron Jacobson. <laughs> he probably, that's probably not his name anymore, I would yeah. assume. So, that being said, Aaron and Laura were never charged with any crimes. Apparently, after Aaron shared his story with detectives about putting his mother in a garbage can, he never spoke about it again. And Laura has always denied involvement in her mother's disappearance. Ew, except for the one time where she was like, or no, it was him admitting that it was her that she was involved. (sighs) What does the dad have to say? Does the dad say anything about this? We don't get any kind of comment from the dad. We do get a comment from the family lawyer saying that Aaron and Laura were both very good children. Ew. No, they weren't. <laughs> no, they weren't. I'm sorry if you were, but you're not. You're not. You're not if you do that. You fu- yeah. You put... <sighs> and so I did come across, like, one of the articles that I was reading was posted on Facebook, even though I had already found the article, like, from Google. So on the Facebook post with the article, there were comments on it, and there was one that was, like, you know, people would say, oh, um, I worked with their father a few years, like, before the disappearance, blah, blah, blah. Someone said that they knew Laura, they were friends with her, and that this all, like, really messed her up and got to her... Um, and that, like, one said, oh, her brother was a bad guy, but who knows? It's all hearsay. Yeah. I would like to think that if they did have something to do with their mother's disappearance, they would feel guilty and maybe admit to it. (laughs) But since it's unsolved and she's still, it's still a disappearance, I would say that they don't feel guilty because there obviously is something that these kids aren't saying. And if it really messed them up and if you're watching this i would suggest that maybe you say something right tell the truth it might make you feel better you may have to go to jail for it but i'm sure you'll feel way better in jail than (laughs) go free i don't like people that fucking do that why (laughs) because it's so like if the kids didn't do it what you really want to say the one person or like it's like I don't know statistic wise. I can't feel it's my okay. foot. <laughs> I can't feel my foot. Pause <laughs> and go. So I don't know the statistics on it, but if like the fucking randomized five percent of cases where it's like an actual person off the street fucking coming in and kidnapping her, so like I'm just trying to think what would the excuse be if the kids did not cause her disappearance? Then why would she have disappeared? Like, well. There's no answer for that because her at least son caused her disappearance. Yeah. And, um... And you should admit to it. (laughs) This case is, as we've mentioned, unsolved and it is cold. Although Aaron and Laura have always remained persons of interest. So someone in that fucking family just needs to tell the truth. You'll feel much better. We promise. Even if her body is long gone by now, it's like, how are you even living 
a comfortable life right now. How do you how do you sleep at night? Yeah, how do you sleep at night? <laughs> they say comfortably. Right. <laughs> Fuck, dude. But yeah, that's that's messed up. I know and there's it, a lack of evidence, but they ha- so like you like, said, they have a partial confession. Yeah. Because we know that he didn't walk in and find his mom dead. He confessed to at least seeing her dead and disposing of her body. He confessed to some sort of crime yeah and that should be enough for any something um so i don't know what happened i would love to know why their relationship was bad i would love to know the cause of death but we We don't. don't we probably never will find out and uh so just to end it on a little bit about cookie i don't have much she was born on September 16th, 1949, so she did have her 49th birthday um, five days before she disappeared, <sighs> a.k.a. got murdered. That made me cold. So she was 49 when she disappeared. <sighs> she was wearing a knee-length blue denim night shirt slash nightgown, a gold wedding band, and a gold necklace with a Hebrew love symbol pendant. <sighs> I'm just like, I know, I know because I have talked about people who adopt kids and are shitty, but there are people who adopt kids because they want to be good parents and they like want to give. And I like, obviously we don't know what happened behind that house. If it was, you know, they were bad parents and that's where this aggression came from. Or if it was literally just him deciding, like, I don't fucking, but it's just like, yeah. And I don't know if adopted you, she took you in as one of her own. Yeah. I don't know if, uh, Aaron and Laura are genetic birth siblings. Um, they, from what pictures I saw, they do kind of look alike, but it said that they were both adopted when they were babies they're three years apart, so I don't know. Yeah. Um, it's it's just kind of, it's really fucked up. It's, so. Yeah. It's how do we end that? So that's <laughs> the disappearance of Cookie Sharon Jacobson. And if you have any information, I'm sorry I didn't get the Tempe police phone number, but we can post it. We'll link it down Because, below. you know... Either of the siblings very well could have said something as they grew up or got older. Maybe they didn't, but it, it's know. as we sometimes see, it's never too late for these things to get solved. Because even if there isn't a body found, a more solid confession of some sort would be helpful. Damn, well, thank you. That was You're a. Welcome. Yeah. That, Sorry, it was kind of short, but... No, it had everything in it because, damn, I'm going to be thinking about this for a second. Yeah. I'm definitely going to be telling someone this at the bar later on tonight. So when Theo becomes a teenager... <laughs> He's not allowed to become a teenager after this episode because what the... <sighs> oh. Yeah, no, the greatest fear unlocked i'm you know i'm just gonna try my best and be a good mom and sometimes that's not enough so if i go missing you know the two people that could have done it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right sarah well fuck thank you thank you for that wow you're welcome not thank you but thank you so if you have any comments if you want to talk about it digest it with us uh or see the photos of today's case we'll post it on all of our socials so you can go follow us there at R-A-R-W podcast. And always feel free to leave an email. Let us know if there's something you want to listen to, if you want to talk to us. Yeah, we if you care. have any experiences that we've already talked about, mm-hmm. just talk to us. We're lonely. We want to hear you. Red Rum and Red Wine Podcast at gmail.com. And always leave five stars. Leave a comment. Always helps out the show. Give us a like for YouTubers. And yeah, cheers to um, hopefully not fucking being killed by my kid god damn it yeah i'd say cheers to not having kids but i'm sure one day you'll want them yeah well i already have baby fever so bye